don't know about you guys, but January is a stressful month. If you haven't taken a break in the holiday, you are going to feel even more exhausted because everyone's coming back and give you more work to do. And if you have taken a break, you're going to be catching up with the backlog of your work. I'm Vera Chen from PhD Coffee Time. Productivity in research is a topic that I have thought a lot about and I have been a researcher for many years. Today, I'd like to share with you a few tips on how to increase the productivity of your work so that you can be in a flow. If you are new to my channel and you are interested in content that can improve your PhD, please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you will not miss any of the upcoming video. I will make weekly videos to talk about how we can be a better researcher. In the last video, I've discussed how you could use a Gantt chart to report your progress and your plan of your project. If you haven't seen the Gantt chart video, I'll put the link in the description box for you to look at it after this one. Knowing how to make a Gantt chart is great for the, for the first week of the year because it gives you a bird's eye view on what your project status is and how you can communicate to your manager, your colleagues about the progress. It's also a standard requirement for a lot of proposal that if you have to write to propose a project, you must know exactly how long the project will take and suggesting how much time you are requesting to be funded. A Gantt chart is, however, not meant to be something you look at day to day. In fact, if you want to report any changes, I recommend you do an adjustment to your Gantt chart every month. And if you email your advisor or your colleagues about the changes in your project, they will be easily following where you are and you are going to impress them by communicating the challenges that you are seeing in your current project in a very effective way. But today, I would like to highlight what we can do to be more effective day to day so that we will be motivated to do a lot of work while we are in the lab. If you write down what you need to do, you are a lot more likely to remember the task and to be able to do it. We tend to believe that we are capable of remembering all this task and it's easy to just get a few tasks that are slipped. I would like to suggest a few ways that we can organize the to-do list to the level that we can get in the lab and just be in the flow. Going through a messy drawer is like the way you have to think about what you need to do every day. This seems very basic, but if you open a drawer and you need to search for a pen, and then you have to search for a paper and post-it sticker, it's going to cost time. Instead, if you already have these items organized and listed out, and you shut the brain down, in the sense you don't have to open the drawer and search for what you need to do every time. You're saving a lot of energy so you can focus on what's really important for your projects. When you have a to-do list, you are going to keep asking yourself, okay, I do this, what's next? I do this, what's next? That should be your goal when you show up to work. You don't lose any time by wondering what you need to do next. When it comes to making a to-do list, I enjoy making a list using the style of computer scientist. You may have known this as a Kanban board method. So in using a Kanban board, what you will do is you will organize columns of what is relevant to your projects. A simple three column can work to as a start, to do, doing, and done. So when you have a project, you can use a separate color of post-it sticker and to me I like to write in separate project or separate activity like writing I will have a color of post-it sticker experiment I will have another color and I write a list of to-do list that I can check off through the day when I show up to work I will examine what I am capable of doing with my calendar on that day I move those sticker actively from the to-do to the doing column and then when I finish the week, I will look at how many stickers I will have finished and I put it to the done board. 
it's going to create a reward system by the time you check off a list and also by the time you really get rid of some of this post-it sticker. It's a powerful way to visualize your project and you feel more on top of all the tasks. Now, before you go and buy a bunch of post-it stickers for your project, I would like to introduce you to Trello. It's been a lifesaver, also a tree saver that we don't use as many pieces of paper to organize our day. So I show you a tutorial simply sharing my screen of what I do in Trello. It's a Kanban style project management site. It also comes with a phone application. You can check off your grocery list when you go shopping. You can check off your lab item when you are in the lab. You can bring your laptop in. So you can organize your research and your personal life using Trello. And no, they didn't pay me to say this, but I've been using Trello for project management on my personal projects and professional projects. And one thing I really like is you can personalize your card using backgrounds of relevant topic. Like I can choose a, a Eppendorf to background that I can relate to. So it just increase your sensitivity of which card is what topic more. You can click on the right one when it shows up as a miniature thumbnail on your phone. You can collaborate with other people who are sharing the same task and you can tag your friend who is working on the same project with you and remind someone. You can set due dates and I think it's a powerful tool to organize complex projects and is made for PhD. I don't know if they made this for PhD, but I really enjoy using it as a researcher. I started the new year by saying how we can make a smart go and how we can be a better version of ourselves than last year. But whatever habits you're trying to change yourself is all about how you make your environment work for you. Say for example, I want to lose weight and I want to eat healthier. As a start, I need to create an environment that is not going to tempt me into eating chips and having junk food. If I create an environment that my home is full of vegetables and fruits, then I'm more likely to eat healthy. And for those who want to exercise more, um, it might mean you have a home environment that you are more available with space or you pull out the yoga mat that is in a more prominent place that it reduces the resistance of you to getting the habits started. Um, for those who want to wake up earlier, it might mean putting your alarm clock slightly further from your bed so that you're going to have to get off your bed when you check off the alarm the first thing in the morning and you were more likely to get to work earlier with that habit. I'm a strong believer of to-do list. I think creating an environment that constantly reminds you what you need to do and what next that you need to do, and you keep knocking out one task at a time, one project at a time, then you are helping yourself to break through the resistance of not getting things done. In fact, you are helping yourself, your future self that might be tired, might be hungry, might be sleepy, that you can hang in there and say, hey, I just need to label this set of tubes before I go home and call it a day. Now, at this point, I know I've talked so much about how to manage setting your goal, how to make sure you have a plan on a bird's eye view Gantt chart, how to make all the little teeny tiny to-do list on your Kanban board and putting it on your Trello. I've learned from a researcher, she reminded me that although it's important to write your plan every day as a list, it's almost as important that you finish a day that you write down all the extra thing that you might have been caused to do and someone asked you to do something or you are reminded to do something. So somehow you didn't stick with your plan on that day. It is okay and do not beat yourself up when you have a day that you finished and you are spending a little bit of time just to celebrate what you have done in extra of your plan, then it's going to give you the motivation that you are happy with that day, you've done the best and you are going to go home, have good rest, come back strong the next day and do more.
you can't beat yourself up when you have a day that is not going to the plan. There are days that things show up and you must be flexible and part of our job as researcher and I always remind my advisor, uh, I have to assure her that look, I am paid to be flexible and adaptable according to your priority. If we change your priority, we'll stick with the change. That's the attitude I encourage you to be taking as a researcher is research is stochastic and there are times you will have to shift your priority. You will have to play with other people's schedule that you have limitations. When you have made the plan, you are going to reduce the resistance of yourself moving across and doing the project. But at the same time, there are 50% of your time that you must try to be flexible, be as pleasant as you can be working with other people. It's an art to do everything all at once efficiently and effectively, and I've never stopped exploring what's better way. So if you have other suggestions and comments, please make sure you talk to me and tell me any better ideas. I'll, I'll make sure to cover it in this channel that, so that it will share to more PhD students who are new to research and they will feel more supported to be a scientist. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.